And from the moment he got saved, he has been a man of prayer, consuming the Word of God, uh, going to two different Bible schools. He's been preaching and evangelizing now for several years all around North America. Has even done some uh, crusades with us overseas and uh, went with us to Haiti. And the uh, power of God came upon him and us in Haiti. And, of course, you know the story of Haiti. That's where we got in an ambush late at night coming home from the crusade. and Bullets were flying and so forth. And uh, our security guard, Jordan, he was um, the one out there firing back and trying to move these barricades and get us out of this ambush. And We got back to the hotel and we could see bullets, holes in the vans and all, but nothing ever penetrated the van. Nobody got hurt. And Jordan said, he said, when I turned around and I saw the vans, now he wasn't a believer at that point, but he was before we left. He said, when I turned around and saw the uh, vans, uh, four vans, we had like 35, 40 people from our church down there. He said, I turned around, looked at those vans, and he said, there was a shield over them. Come on, we're just singing about defend us, Lord. He said, I knew we were going to be okay. And I said, can we pray for you? And he said, absolutely. He's a big, tall guy. But somehow, Brother Marcus got his hand up on top of his head. And we started praying for that man who's on the, 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 the detail of protecting the president of Haiti. And he got the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And he told me later, he said, he said, when that young Marcus put his hand on my head, he said, I felt fire go through my body. I hope you're ready for the word of God, because if you'll open up your heart today to the word of God, the word of God will come like fire into your heart. And it'll change you from the inside out. Would you welcome Evangelist Marcus Baptiste? Amen, amen, amen. All across the building, one more time, clap your hands unto the Lord. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord and open up your mouth. And why don't you shout unto God? Come on, that's cute, but why don't you shout unto God? with a voice of triumph it's an attitude of victory shout unto god with a voice of triumph amen 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 in 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 today's day and age there's a lot of shouting going on but but we shout on purpose amen we shout with purpose it's with a voice of triumph Amen. Amen. We've we've we got victory before we ever entered the battlefield. And so we shout with a voice of triumph. Amen. I'm so thankful to be at East Wind. Uh, so much has adjusted uh, aesthetically uh, in the past few months. And what a tremendous job you guys have maintained the standard of excellence that you guys are so accustomed to following and i'm just so thankful for great leadership like your pastor and your bishop how much how many of you guys are thankful for your pastor and your bishop first lady celebrating her birthday amen that's this is leadership what you see this is leadership what you see a uh, song has been stuck in my head a song has been stuck in my head uh, it's a haitian song it just says uh, even when the sand is hot under my feet my decision is to keep on going Amen. Amen. I just feel like there's a push in here today. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all Haitians smiling back at me. I can see it. Amen. Amen. If you can open up your Bibles, open up your Bibles with me. We're going to go to John chapter five, John chapter five. As you're turning there, I got the chance to hear Brother Dylan uh, and Brother Jude do a tremendous job ministering to your young people. There's something special on your young people. I wish you guys knew the quality of young people that you guys have. There's something special on your young people. That youth team and that those those young group, there's something special on them. Amen. You don't got to believe it, but I'll tell you, there's going to be a generation that rises out of them. There's going to be an army that comes out of this youth group that's going to shift stuff in this city. Amen. Amen. I, I, 
Well, I'll leave it there. Amen. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. So good to see my friend Jordan over there. Amen. I feel a lot more comfortable in service when he's here. John chapter 5. Start with verse 1. When you're there, say amen. 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 John chapter 5, verse 1. And it says, after this, there was a feast of Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And there, uh, there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethsaida, having five Porsches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving. Everybody shout the moving. King James says the troubling. Shout the troubling. The troubling of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Whoever stepped in first after the stirring or the troubling of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Amen. I preached it this morning, but I'm going to preach it again. But I feel just there's a different atmosphere here in this service. There's a different atmosphere here in this service. Listen, can I, can I tell you the only, the only wasted water is water that's never poured on Jesus' feet. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you, don't waste anything before you leave this place. Make sure before you leave, every ounce of faith that you have inside of you, every ounce of worship that you have inside of you, that every expectation that you could present to God, that you would extend yourself and touch him. Amen. 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 I want you to set your Bibles down and we're going to pray here in a little bit. Amen. Amen. I, I want to move forward, but there's something stirring here. Amen. Some stuff that came in, came in with you from your home is not going to go back with you. I'm talking to generational spirits. I feel something strong in here. I'm commanding there to be a generational shift. That what mother and daddy was struggling with, that we're no longer going to be bound to. We're moving forward. Lift both your hands and pray with me all across the building. I want you to pray with me. Lift your voice and begin to pray with me. If you have the Holy Ghost, I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Young people, I want you to lift your voice and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, come on if you're tired of things saying the shame and you're wanting something to break before you leave lift your voice and pray with me this service doesn't belong to the religious but there's a few hungry folk in the building that have made up their mind before I walk out of the building God is going to do something in my life all across the building clap your hands unto the Lord and lift up your voice and shout the name of Jesus Lift your voice and shout the name of Jesus. I wish you'd throw your head back and shout the name of Jesus. Shatayana Masa. Some of you have been praising God with chains long enough. I, I, I have an aggression on me today to break every chain that's restricted you, that's bound you, that's confounded you. I'm determined that you would be loosed in the Holy Ghost today. Amen, amen, amen. Look at two or three people, tell them it was a, it was a bittersweet moment. It was a bittersweet moment. Amen. If you'll preach with me, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Story picks up in John chapter 5 as John is attempting to present something that has taken place. He says that it was a time of a feast. 
that Jesus made his way by Bethsaida. On his way to Bethsaida, he passes these, this place that had five porches. And there laid there a great multitude of sick people. Blind, lame, paralyzed. Waiting for the troubling of the water. Because John said there was an angel that went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred the water. And whoever stepped in the water was made whole. Amen. Jesus approaches a man that is there. Jesus approaches a man who is lying there and who had been there for some time. And he says, do you want to be made well? The sick man looks at him and says, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred. Isn't it shocking that the man's response to Jesus' question, do you want to be made well? He said, I have no man, not realizing he had a God. Uh, apostolics can sometimes struggle with uh, the realization of what we don't have uh, and forget the power in what we do have he said I do not have a man but can I remind you you still have a God amen he's there and he says I have no man to help me into the water when the water is stirred when the angel comes down and troubles the water there's no one to assist me in putting me in the water and so he he attempts to explain to Jesus why he could not be made well and can I tell you that the scripture presents the reality that when the angel would come when the message from heaven would come there was a stirring that would take place that would release the supernatural can I tell you why there's so much power in this building there's other places with great music other places with big buildings but when the angel of the Lord steps behind the pulpit there's a stirring that takes place in the atmosphere that still knows how to deliver the addicted still knows how to set free the bound still knows how to heal the sick can I tell you you're in an apostolic church and when the messenger troubles the water the, the angel you may be seated the angel would trouble the water and when the angel would trouble the water something would begin to happen something would begin to move can I tell you you cannot serve an active God and be inactive yourself it is impossible to serve an active God and be inactive yourself the first time the spirit of God comes on the scene he is described as a moving God the Bible says that he hovered over the face of the water God is always moving and the problem is is sometimes we are stuck outside of the move but can I challenge someone this morning I I want you to make up your mind that when the spirit begins to blow, when the wind begins to move, when the stirring begins to happen, you won't stay restricted in your seat, in your guilt, in your doubt, but you'll make up your mind. I'm going to step in the troubling of the waters. Scripture says that what would take place is that the water was troubled. Everybody shout troubled. Water was troubled. It's interestingly enough that this word choice that, that trouble is the platform for the miraculous. That God used trouble to show the supernatural. That it wasn't when the water was peaceful, the miraculous would take place. But when chaos ensued, I like the way David put it. He said, when my mother and father forsake me, there is a timeline to the prophetic. 
He said, when, when my mother and father forsake me, can I tell you that sometimes the thing that triggers the miraculous is the sickness itself. It's the trouble itself. It's the pandemic itself. It's the economic. You can sit there all you want, but sometimes it takes a little trouble to get you stirred out of where you are to where he is. Come on, let's preach. Come on. <laughs> amen, amen. You, you, you may be seated. You may be seated. I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna get in trouble, but I'm going to say this really quick, and I'm going to move on. David put it this way. He said, listen, David finds himself after he goes to Ziglag, and everything has been taken from him. And the Bible says that David did what? Encourage himself in the Lord. And we like to spiritualize that. Amen. But we forget the reality of the situation that David just lost sons and daughters to encourage himself in. David just lost mother and father to encourage himself in. Leadership wasn't there for him to encourage himself in. And so God had to strip every other man for him to realize he still had a God. And David had to learn to encourage himself in the Lord. Can I ask you this morning, how much trouble does God have to put you through before you realize my strength comes when I learn to encourage? myself the worshiper you're sitting next to is someone who learned it wasn't mommy or daddy but the Lord brought me out but the Lord saved my soul but the clap your hands if you believe that if it was God who did it can you clap your hands unto the Lord amen amen, amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. It was a bitter, sweet moment. It, this isn't the first time this takes place. Not the first time that God uses trouble to bring something out that was never there before. Because what you find is, is that in the book of Exodus, when Moses comes on the scene, consider the context that Moses comes in. That when Moses comes on the scene in Exodus, the first few chapters, the Bible records that what Pharaoh did, because he realized that people were getting too great in multitude. And if they got too great in a multitude, they would overthrow their, the people of dominance. They would overthrow the Egyptians. And so Pharaoh was not concerned about growth. Pharaoh was concerned about dominion. The enemy is not concerned about growth. Because you can grow and still be bound. They were growing with shackles on their hands and shackles on their feet and whips being put on their back. You can grow and never have, but the enemy gets concerned when you talk about going home and changing some things. You, can, you got, got a little quiet there. Pastor Carl said I could hear a rat licking ice. Amen. <laughs> when you start talking about dominion, the enemy gets concerned. And what he says is he says, I need to destroy the young men. Huh. I need to destroy the young man. I, I'm, I'm so off from where I thought I was going to go, but I'm going to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. There is a spirit of Pharaoh that has entered our society. Cultural groups that struggle with absentee father at a 74, 75% rate. Do you know what that is? It is the destruction of the young man. I'm feeling something. Can I tell you that? Can I tell you that the identity of man is found in his father? Adam never knew how he looked like because he had a mirror. The Bible says that Adam, the son of God, which means he had to have had a father, looked up after God breathed into him and he knew who he was because who his God was. So if you strip the father, you destroy the child. 
I'm talking to somebody here today. If you can strip the father, you you destroy the child. And, and, and what Pharaoh decided to do is that he needed to destroy the young man. And he's doing it today. And what he would do is that he would take these young men and that he would throw them into the water. And when they were thrown into the water, they were drowned in the water. And a whole generation was lost in water. A whole generation was lost in water. Wasn't a daddy to spare them. Wasn't a mama to pray over them. But somehow as a whole generation is being lost in chaos. As a whole group of people are fleeing the church. As a whole generation are turning to philosophies and vain doctrines. There was a man named Moses who was pulled out of the same environment that was killing his I prophesy that the same thing that's trying to kill these millennials will begin to birth something in them that will bring end to the broken family that should have destroyed you the addiction that should have killed you you're about to come out and be a deliverer Uh, you may be seated, you may be seated. Moses, Moses, Moses is drawn out of the bath blood of his generation. But God understood, I don't need new waters to perform the miraculous. I'll take the same place where everybody died and produce life. God doesn't need a new body to heal you. He just needs his spirit. He doesn't need a new situation. He just needs your faith. Uh, 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 look at someone tell them it was a bitter moment it was it was a bitter moment look at someone else tell them it was a bitter moment shout out me it was a bitter moment it was a bitter moment there 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 Moses is drawn out of the water and when Moses is drawn out of the water he's drawn out of the same thing that killed his generation isn't that crazy that when Moses was growing up there was no other young man that he can celebrate a birthday with that year that when Moses was growing up he would have been the only man in his class that when Moses was growing up he would have been the only one on the school ground in his age but something when people would ask him what does your name mean he would say it was I was drawn out of the water I was pulled out of the stuff that should have killed me but I'm still here I should have been destroyed in the situation but I'm still here they tried to take me out but yeah that should have been over but I'm still here it was a bittersweet moment Moses would find himself in the same situation because when they cross over Egypt, isn't this crazy that Egypt represents the world, children of Israel represents the church, body of water that they cross to represents their new birth experience, but they find bitter waters after the conversion. You ever experienced hurt after you got in church that you never experienced before you got in church? More backstabbing after you got in church than before you ever. I'm talking to somebody. You could hide, but I'm going to find you today. More pain and hurt after you got in church than more loss after you crossed over the waters of baptism. They come to the waters of Mara. Bitter. Attempting to quench their thirst, kneeling down just to get a sip of water and find out that it's bitter. Talk to some guests in this place. Trying that new drug and find out that it just left you bitter. Amen. In the new relationship with the new boyfriend and just left bitter. Second, third, fourth marriage and you're still bitter talk to you tonight amen thought the vacation would have helped your family but you're still bitter the struggle with bitterness is what it affects is that it 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 finds a root that's why the apostle called it the root of bitterness well what's, what's what's the struggle with the root of bitterness is that sometimes you can't see it 
hide, hide some bitter saint, some bitter guest in here today. Amen. You don't want me to dig too deep because if I dig deep enough, I'll find a root of bitterness. You ever consider the Apostle Paul that when Paul was shipwrecked and on this island, he reaches in his hand to start a fire and the Bible says a viper latches on to him. And what they say is that this, this man must have done something wrong because it was a venomous viper. They weren't concerned about the viper. They were concerned about the venom. They weren't concerned about the bite. They were concerned about the bitterness. Because sometimes we walk out of situations, but the situation stayed in us. I'm talking to you today. And now you're struggling with a root of bitterness. You ever, you ever see a root? It's just, it's intertwined under the surface. Can I tell you what a root of bitterness? It's internal bondage. Amen. Because addiction will latch on to you on the outside, but bitterness will keep you bound on the inside. And when you look apostolic but can't lift your hands because you're still bitter at God, and when you look apostolic but can't shout because you're still mad at what he did or did not do, talk to you tonight amen uh, let's let's dig a little bit because bitterness has you bound on the inside uh, Paul is there and bitten by the snake they said if the bite doesn't kill him the bitterness will if the viper doesn't kill him the venom will you can leave Egypt but you still got the bruises of the whips Man, we're, look at the person next to you say, we're, we're coming out today. We're coming out today. We're coming out today. Paul, Paul goes through this, but I believe God had to have him come to this experience because there was something else going on because that wasn't the first bitter moment that Paul had. Paul had a friend named Mark. Yeah. And when Paul needed Mark the most, Mark was nowhere to be found. You ever had a mark in your life? You know the mark that always asks you for money till you need something? <laughs> you, ever, you ever had a, you know you got a mark in your life because whenever you look at the phone when they call, you roll your eyes. <laughs> First thing come out your mouth when you see Mark calling is, what do you want? <laughs> what he need this time? Where is he at now? Bitterness. But Luke was faithful. Luke was the physician. Luke, Luke, Luke was healing. Luke was that balm in Gilead for him. But I want you to see what Paul says that when Paul is beginning to talk to Timothy, he said, all have deserted me. They all left me. And I'm here by myself. But send for Mark. Because he's what? Profitable for me. Because what Luke could not offer, bitterness produced. Amen, amen. I want to come down to your level because you're hiding, but I'm going to find you today. Amen, amen. Luke, Luke, Luke was faithful. Luke, Luke was always there when you needed him. Luke, Luke was the physician. And, and God, God left Paul with Luke. God left Paul with everything that was good. Everything that felt right. But Paul learned something. I didn't profit off of Luca, but I profited off of bitterness. It was when everything collapsed that I learned there's still a bomb in Gilead. When I was lonely, I learned there's a friend that sticks closer. Mark didn't feel good, but it was good to me. Uh, 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 this morning, I give you liberty. I give you liberty to let go of bitterness. <laughs> I give you liberty to let go of bitterness. Some of you have stunted your spiritual growth because you refuse to let go of the bitterness that hurt, hurt you. Uh, I, I know I'm kind of everywhere, but, but just bear with me just a few more moments. Joseph, after finding success, bears forth one son. And he says, God has called me to forget. He said, I forgot. Then the next son, he says, God has called me to be what? Fruitful. 
So before I can be fruitful, I have to be willing to forget. I can't bear forth fruit until I let go of some things. I'm going to talk to you tonight that some of you are struggling with what happened, but you don't realize it didn't kill you. It just made you better. If I'm still here, it made me better. Uh, can, I, can, can, can I help you with something? Some of you just need to thank God for the next 20 seconds uh, that it didn't destroy me. I may not be the worshiper that you think I am, but it didn't kill me. I'm still here. I may not take a lap when you want me to, but it didn't kill me. I'm still here. And if Mark didn't kill me, bring back Mark because he's profitable unto me. Stand all across the building. Stand all across the building. Stand all across the building. God's about to do something. I'm talking to marriages that you guys have just been maintaining because you won't deal with bitterness. Families that have just been maintaining because you won't deal with bitterness. I'm talking to wives that you're still mad at God and that's why you won't let go of the stuff that's going on. But today God's saying I give you liberty to remember that Mark might not have been good to me but he was good for me and because Mark did not kill me bring back Mark because he's profitable to me conclude with this that God's about to move God sends his disciples to begin to propagate the gospel of the kingdom sends them out by twos and pairs says I want you to go to house to house I want you to begin to tell them about the gospel I want you to begin to preach my kingdom and if they if they receive you allow your peace to abide in that home but if they reject you if you have a bitter experience here's here's what I want you to do before you leave the city I want you to take the dust that's off your feet and do what do what shake it off I want you to loose yourself and, and here, here, here's the revelation in this, is that in that time and culture and custom, what they would do is, is that whenever they exited the promised land and went into foreign land, before they came back into promise, they got rid of the dust of the past. Because I can't go into promise defiled by what I went through. Although it might be under my feet, I don't want it connected to me. So we're going to move forward, but I got to lose myself. East Wind, we're going to have revival, but I got to lose myself. I can't be defined by what happened, by what they said, by what I did, by my mistake. Lose myself. Lift your hands all across the building. Lift your hands all across the building. Lift your voice. I want you to begin to pray for a moment. Demonstration's about to occur. Demonstration about to occur. If I've been preaching to you and you're comfortable doing so, make your way to this altar as quick as possible. If you need the Holy Ghost, make your way to the front. If you need healing in your body, make your way. Some of you are dealing with sickness because you're harboring bitterness. You don't need the word of faith. You need to forgive. And if you'll forgive, that's a word for somebody. If you'll forgive, God will heal your body. Because healing's in the blood. And you can't partake of the blood until you forgive. If you'll forgive, healing will occur tonight. Make your way down with your hands lifted. Make your way down with your hands lifted. Make your way down and your hands lifted. If you're a guest in the room today, you're about to have an experience that's going to loose you. Loose you from your past. Loose you from trying to do it and fail it. You've tried long enough, but this morning it's time to loose yourself. I feel the power of God in this place. Come down with your hands lifted comes down with your hands lifted ah, ah. bitterness has to let you go today bitterness has to let you go today 
every eye closed, every hand lifted, God's about to do something. If you need the Holy Ghost, God's about to fill you. If you need healing, God's about to heal you. If you need wholeness, God's about to mend you. Because we're about to step into the promise of the Father. We're about to walk in the promise of the Father. Because when we shake the dust of past experience and past brokenness and past mistakes and we say what I am right now will not define who I am. We're about to walk in a new level. East Wind, if you're ready, lift both your hands with me. Lift both your hands, lift your head. Lift both your hands, lift your head. I want you to close your eyes. Begin to pray. I'm going to pray the word of faith. <laughs> I'm going to pray the word of faith, but before we pray the word of faith, we're going to repent. Do you know what repentance is? It's turning away. You might be in a good spot, but it's not a godly spot. Turn away. You might be comfortable, but you're not where he wants you. Turn away. Because until we find greatness, it's time to turn away. Lift your hands, lift your voice, and begin to pray with me. I want you to begin to ask God, 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 take the dust off of me. Take the dust off of me. I left the land, but I still got the dust on my feet. I left the land, but I still got the dust on my feet. I want to walk in your promise. But before I get there, I got to lose myself. I got to lose myself. That's it all across the building. Lift your voice. If you're a visitor, just begin to pray with us. This might be different, but what you're doing is loosing yourself up. That shit begin to pray. And when I pray the word of faith, I want you to shout the name of Jesus as loud as you can. And when you lift your voice, every root of bitterness, every wall of brokenness, everything that has kept you bound is going to have to lose you by the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus. I lose you to walk into the promise. I lose you into the new level. Shout. Jesus! Where the spirit of the Lift your voice and begin to walk in. Lift your voice and begin to walk in.
shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Say chains, chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' oh, name. Lives made whole, lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Every chain. Like the way, dance like the way. 